I join with Sister Peggy in welcoming everyone to this unique way of doing lunch and happy Dominic's Day. My name is Sister Diane Capuano. I've been a Dominican sister of Amityville for the past 29 years. I currently serve on the leadership team for the congregation. Throughout these 29 years in the congregation, experiences in ministry and sharing life in community expanded my vision and heart in ways I never imagined. I was and continue to be inspired and energized by our sense of mission, which began over 800 years ago with St. Dominic, whose feast day we celebrate today. This mission and vision responds to the needs of the time. This mission and vision brings the gospel message of Jesus, the gospel message of love to all people and all creation. In 1853, when the four sisters arrived from Regensburg, Germany, to teach the children of German immigrants, the Dominican Sisters of Amityville continue to respond to the needs of the time, whether it be in education, healthcare, social justice, climate change, and the list can go on and on and on. Throughout our history, we have widened our tent, partnering with lay men and women, persons like yourselves, to ensure this mission of preaching would continue. While your choice to be here with us today, and for many of you, it has been for so many of our luncheons, your generous support, in particular for our retired sisters, empowers the congregation to not only be able to care for our elders, but to reach out to the pressing needs of this time. It's not an either or use of resources. It is both care for our sisters, for our elders, within the congregation and concern for those beyond our borders. Today, Kathleen Friend, an associate of the Dominican Sisters of Amityville, Jeff Lozano and Eddie Cramsey, both recent Malloy College graduates, will share their experiences of a mission in the small village of El Sol, Sol Naciente in El Salvador. This mission was founded by Sister Flora de Maria Baruca, a Dominican sister of Amityville, over 10 years ago. Sister Flora, a native of El Salvador, responded to the urgent need to help the people in El Sol Naciente. These people had lived in La Unión, which is where Sister Flora grew up. La Unión is a seaport town. The people of El Sol Naciente lived by the water in La Unión and relied on the fishing, on fishing for their livelihood. A first world country, not the United States, decided to build a port where these people lived. These residents were displaced and migrated to El Sol Naciente. They lost everything, including clean running water. Sister Flor assisted these people in building their community. Through fundraising efforts here in the States, she raised enough money to build a beautiful chapel in the center of the village for the people to gather for prayer and community meetings. The name of the chapel is St. Catherine Immaculate Conception. On the main door of the chapel is a huge Dominican cross, a reminder of our Dominican presence in this village and among the people. With the rise of gang violence and a poor school system, Sister Flora responded to this need and began an after-school program and a one-week camp experience for the children in the village. For several years as campus minister at Malloy College, I accompanied students along with 
adult mentors, and students from Dominican College in Broadbelt, New York, to El Sol Naciente, where we assisted Floor with her camp. In my new ministry on our leadership team, I will continue to go with the two colleges to El Sol Naciente to support Sister Floor in her mission, in our mission. Given the pandemic, we more than likely will not be able to go this January, but look forward to when we can return. So, Kathleen, Jeff, and Eddie will now share their experiences, and we will begin with Kathleen. Hi, I'm Kathleen Friend, and for the past 18 years, I've had the joy and blessing to be an associate. Walking together with our sisters, associates, and young adults, Dominican is who I strive to be in everything that I do. Their joy and sense of mission is what initially called me. Nobody parties like a gaggle of Dominicans, and their commitment to mission, both foreign and domestic, is beyond compare. No borders. Saying that, however, anyone who knows me knows this is absolutely the last thing I would choose to do. But when I heard what we would be talking about, well, here we go. There is a place that all four of us would love to be, a place that has taken a piece of our hearts, Sol Naciente. In a few minutes, we'll show you a short video. I'm sure you will then understand why we have fallen in love with the kids and community there. For the past three Januaries, I've accompanied Sister Diane, AKA Hermana D, and the young adults. Hopefully in the not too, too distant future when the, this pandemic is over, we'll be able to go back. I can't imagine going there and not being able to hug everyone. I'd like to share one story with all of you to show the bond that has built up in the last 10 years. Normally, whatever normal is, the ride from the airport in San Salvador to Sol Naciente is about three, three and a half hours. Two years ago, there was, a, there was major road construction and it took us nearly seven hours. By the time we got to camp, it was pitch black. There were no street lights. There were no streets, just dirt roads. We never expected to find anyone there since we were so late. But as we left the bus and headed into camp, we could see the flickering of lights. The people, kids and adults, were all lined up holding candles and singing to welcome us. They had been waiting all those hours in the dark. There wasn't a dry eye that night, but lots of hugs. During the 10 days we're there, we distribute t-shirts and sneakers that folks at home have so generously donated. You would think we were giving these kids gold, they're used to kicking a soccer ball barefoot or with flip-flops on. They're really not looking for anything from us except love and affection, and they give it right back to us. Going there, I've witnessed firsthand not only how these mission trips help the people we visit, but also how these, how these young adults and I are forever changed. And the preaching continues. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Wow, I want to go back there right now. Me too. <laughs> that was some experience that we uh, we each had uh, that night when um, those children and and the uh, the people of the town, the parents, all met us and were singing. And you know what they were singing? They were singing our Dominican blessing in English and in Spanish. What an experience that was. So now. We're going to hear from Eddie Cramsey. No, I'm sorry. We're going to hear from Jeff Lozano, who's going to share a little bit about uh, the camp and the structure of the camp and um, some fabulous work that he continues to do for this camp. Thank you, Sister Diane, for the opportunity. Um, nice to see you, Kathy, as well. So my name is Jeff Lozano. I am a recent graduate of Malloy College. I graduated in the class of 2019 with a Bachelor's of Science in Education. I'm currently teaching at St. Martin de Porres Marianist School, run by the Marianist Society in Uniondale. And through there, and through the work I now am able to do with Eddie Cramsey, we're still trying to continue to help 
the children and the families of Sol Naciente El Salvador. Um, I myself am from a Salvadorian background. My father is from uh, St. Rosa Lima in El Salvador. So it was kind of fulfilling for me to be able to go back to where my family is from and to see where my people are from originally and to get that hit into myself of this is where I come from. So it was an experience for me. So I'm going to speak about the structure of our camp and how we are able to help them throughout our work here in the United States and continue to support them and help them. So the structure of the camp begins when the children first meet you and hug you like there's no tomorrow. You are pretty much like a present seen on Christmas day to them because you're different. You're not like everyone else in the village. You might be like Eddie was and the only ginger they've ever seen in the country. <laughs> But for those children, seeing you, seeing the gringos, was something special and important for them. So the first thing you do usually is get to know the kids, get to see who's around, get to see who's come back, who's new, introduce yourself, and usually have a nickname by then. Also, you might have lost your phone by then because they might have grabbed it from you, trying to see your different technology you got. For the community service projects, students were able to do different things in their community. While I was there uh, two years ago, the students were able to paint trash cans to put in different parts of the camp. So instead of throwing the garbage on the floor, they are able to put it in somewhere where they can get removed the waste as well. They worked around the camp cleaning up the facility, making sure that there was no trash, that making sure that the gardens looked really nice. One day I remember that the kids were grabbing rakes and they're like, can we go rake this? We finished here. Can we keep going? Just because they felt that spiritual connection of like St. Dominic tells us of community and, and service as well. Of just like, just do it. And the kids just wanted to do it. They just wanted to help out and see what else they can do during their time scheduled for community service. Like I said, the camp was scheduled in this way based on the four pillars of the Dominican society, which are service, spirituality, study, and community. Each section of the camp was pretty much a part of the four pillars. And when we came together in the mornings for morning prayer, you saw the spirituality and the community and the service and the study because the students brought with them every single day homework that we would assign for them. The homework was assigned by a special guest. The homework was assigned by a special guest that would come visit the students to do a daily religious lesson. I had the opportunity on my first visit, my first time down in El Salvador working in the camp to dress up as St. Martin de Porres and teach the students about the Beatitudes and religion and faith as well. On the second time that I went, St. Rosa Lima appeared with them and taught them about service, community, and loving one another and their community. So their homework was assigned by a saint meaning it was holy, you know. So then once we finished morning prayer, the students were broken up into their activities. And each activity, like I said, pretty much had some form of Dominican pillar integrated into it. And the students learned by their actions, by working with others, and by having fun as a kid. They got to have the best week of their lives because it was something different from what they usually have. And what made it different was the Dominican pillars because it brought them something different that they didn't have other days. But then we were able to bring to them and help them to keep those for the rest of the year until we came back again and recharged that battery. Uh, Jeff, if you could speak of what I was have been so impressed by you. Um, you came to El Salvador, you met the kids, you fell in love with the kids, you fell in love with the people. And on your own, you came back and for two years now, you have been running fundraisers for this community on your own here. Why? It all started with a conversation we were having on our way back um, from La Union to um, the hotel we were staying at before leaving to come home. And we were having a conversation in, a, I think it was the lobby, and we just said, what's next? What do we do next to help? Because we're leaving here now, but we're all saying we'll do this, we'll do that, but what actually are we going to do? So at one point, I just grabbed my phone and made a phone call back to the US and asked a former boss of mine who was running um, an event space, if I could borrow the event space, if this date's booked in January, if it's open, and can I throw a party? Can I do something there? And she said, yeah, sure, it's open. So I came back and had the mindset of, I wanna do something. There's something I can do, I'm going to do it. and. What I did was I came up with a fundraiser where we had over 50 raffle baskets and we had about 80 people show up that night and we were able to raise close to $4,000 one night. And then we were able to support them because I felt 
what is my calling to leave here? What would have Jesus done if he were here? And then I felt a need and a calling to do something to help them after I left. And then even after I can no longer go anymore, or if I can go back again, there's still a need there. And what can I do here if I'm not able to go back there? And what I can do here is help raise funds, support them by not just collecting money, also collecting school supplies, clothing, anything that we can do to help them with back where they are. That's uh, following Jesus. And it's also very much our Dominican mission. So thank you. Thank you so much. For, thank you. Which is, which is gracias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now Eddie will continue uh, with that experience of the camp and also what Eddie and um, some others have done uh, here in the States, again, to continue to help this mission. So thank you, Eddie. Uh, thanks for being with us today. Uh, I started going to El Salvador the same year as Kathy and Jeff three years ago. And immediately you felt the presence of the people and the love. Uh, I was a little fearful going in because I didn't speak any Spanish. And maybe two days in, I really comprehended the, this idea that we talk about all the time of the language of love, where you don't need to be able to say exactly what you want to the kids while you're playing with them, you know, with like soccer balls or footballs. You don't have to be able to speak with them and understand the exact words that they're saying, but there is such a closeness between all of the Malloy and Dominican college students that go down there and the kids that are in the camp. It's, it's hard to put into words exactly that bond that right away from the start there is between us. Uh, but it, it's a, it's a driving force that once you have it, you can't get rid of it. You can't let it go. I was speaking with another uh, student that went down to El Salvador with us after Jeff's fundraiser. And we were speaking a little bit more on, all right, Jeff really started off. He hit a home run right away. How can we help him? How can we add on to this? So the other student's name is uh, Joseph Marino. And it was really his idea that I, I said to him, we should do pitches to companies to see if they would invest. And he said, I've been thinking about this for a little while now. Uh, I spoke to, he spoke to another girl that was on the trip and she's, he said, why don't we try and form an official 501c non-for-profit charity? So I said, that'd be great. That's fantastic. So we got into the works. We met up with a law firm and we created Hope Sol Naciente uh, LTD which is an official 501c3 charity. So we can uh, host this fundraiser and say, all right, like right, let's try and get more uh, businesses involved. Now it's tax deductible, anything that's donated. So it, really, uh, it would really make a difference for the larger charity or the larger companies uh, trying to get them involved. Um, and, and the reason that I, I really wanted to continue and be a part of this mission moving forward forward even if I can't go physically um, we're really it, it's all about the kids uh, we've seen through multiple kids down there just an untapped uh, different talents and uh, it's kind of incredible I actually have here uh, a painting by one of the students down there his name's Inmar and every year he'll take us to his house and will give us all like a sp our own special artwork, a special project that he'll, he'll start working on the day we leave and they'll all be ready by the time we get there next year. And he's always so excited to give them to us. And uh, another thing is, is a lot of these kids will leave January 9th and we'll be texting them January 10th. I miss you, I love you, can't wait for you to come back. Uh, and that conversation rolls through the entire year, uh, which is which is fantastic, and it it really keeps us going. I know that for sure personally. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to speak on is about the water project that we're doing down there. 
Dorothy Filaramo and Ryan O'Gorman from Dominican College. Uh, they saw a presentation by Sister Floor about the water quality there and lack of water. And Sister Floor brought up, it was a Ziploc bag filled with water and told the group she was presenting to, that's what these kids drink out of every day. They don't have running water in the community. They have these big colindrums almost that get filled once a week if they're lucky. And she said that's unacceptable. So she teamed up with Ryan and they went down there to, to visit the well that was there pre-existing, but it didn't go far enough into the land. So there was no water coming from it. So they had to have everything shipped in. Um, so over the past seven years, eight years, uh, something like that, they have been working with uh, the community to try and get a new well built there with the Rotary Club. And happily, as of last January, they finally broke ground on the new well. They're in the final stages of that and they're installing meters into the homes of all of the community. Uh, we actually, this last January, went to the well where they were building it. And we met a little family there that uh, I think they said they haven't had running water in 20 years, something, something like that. And it was heartbreaking because they, she had these two little boys who very well could have been my cousins who were sprinting around the forest trying to scare us. And they were laughing and playing with us. And uh, they, they didn't have running water for 20 years. They would have to have a truck ship in water just so they can bathe, just so they could take a shower with buckets, um, which is which has been very inspiring work, and uh, blessed. I'm blessed to be a part of it. Thank you, Eddie. I, I clearly um, Saint Dominic. <laughs> clearly, the sisters that um, founded uh, our congregation, the Dominican Sisters of Amityville. Um, this is such a vision. Uh, that the sisters had, that Dominic had, and that we continue today. Um, and just to, uh, to give you a little glimpse of uh, what we have experienced when we go down there, we'd like to show you a, a short uh, video, which will, you will see the kids, you will see the chapel, you'll see Sister Floor. I think you'll see all of us in the video at some point. And, um, what I hope you catch, or I think you're going to catch, is um, a tremendous love. Uh, eyes of love, hearts of love, uh, and how the happiness and the joy uh, that, uh, that we experience, uh, that the children, the kids give to us, and hopefully we give to them. So we'll see that now. Remember me Though I have to say goodbye Remember me Don't let it make you cry For even if I'm far away I hold you in my heart I sing a secret song to you Each night we are apart Remember me travel far remember me each time you hear a sad guitar know that I'm with you the only way that I can be until you're in my arms Si en tu mente viva estoy, recuérdame Mis sueños yo te doy Te llevo en mi corazón y te acompañaré 
Unidas en nuestra canción Contigo ahí estaré Recuérdame Si sola crees estar Recuérdame Y mi cantar te irá a abrazar Aún en la distancia Nunca vayas a olvidar Que yo contigo siempre As you have seen and heard, this life-giving mission is that much stronger because of the gifts and talents of intergenerational collaboration. What is not seen is how many of our sisters in the mother house and in our local communities who are no longer engaged in active ministry support this mission, our mission, through their own personal donations, and as a powerhouse of prayer. I want to thank Eddie and Jeff and Kathleen uh, for sharing uh, their experiences with all of us today. I want to thank all of you uh, who are here with us virtually at the luncheon. May all of you win big today. And uh, again, thank you and muchas gracias. <laughs>